Macros are one of Vim's superpowers. They give you the ability to record a sequence of commands you enter in normal mode and replay those commands easily. To begin recording a Vim macro, you'll press the Q key followed by some register name. So remember, a register name is a single letter or character, uh, such as the letter M. And so if I wanted to record a macro into register M, I would press Q followed by the M key. And in our status bar, we'll see that we are recording a macro at location M. We'll enter our commands in normal mode as we typically would. And to stop recording the macro from normal mode, we'll once again press the Q key. This terminates the, the macro recording process. Once we've recorded a macro, we can press the at symbol followed by the register name that that macro is stored in. So at followed by M would cause those sequence of steps to be replayed. Let's try this out. We've got a file with phone numbers in it, so I'm going to edit that file very quickly. And let's imagine we wanted to record a macro that inserts some dashes into a given phone number, and we want to apply the same formatting to the rest of the document. Well, to begin recording a macro, we can press the Q key, followed by M, which is the name of the register. And now I'm going to move my cursor over to the place that I want to insert next press the I key, insert my dash, press the open square bracket. Move my cursor over again, press the I key again to go into insert mode, insert a dash, escape back to normal mode. And then to prepare myself for, to be ready to apply the same process to the next line, I'm going to move my cursor down by one line and then use the caret to move to the start of the next line. And so these are the steps that we would apply to a single line that would leave us in a position that would allow us to begin the process to the next line. So let's go ahead and stop recording our macro. I'll press Q again. And so now my macro is done recording. We can replay a macro by using the at symbol followed by the name of the register we stored it in. So at M applies that same macro to where our cursor currently is. Right? So at M does it again. You can repeat the last macro you ran with the at at symbol. So at followed by at again will apply the math last macro that you ran again. Just like with other commands, with macros, we can cause them to be repeated by putting the number of times we'd like them to be repeated in front of it. So 10 followed by the at symbol and then the name of the macro M causes that macro to be repeated 10 times over. I mentioned earlier that macros store their contents into a register. So I'm going to go to the top of my file and insert a new line and go back to normal mode. And we learned previously that we can paste from a register by first addressing the register. So in this case, double quote M and then P. And you'll notice what was stored in that register. Well, what was stored in that register is move the cursor over to the right three times, insert a dash, escape back to normal mode, insert the cur or move the cursor to the right four times, insert a dash, go back to normal mode, go down one line and then go to the start of the line. So those keys that we pressed, they were recorded into a register. Similarly, uh, because these registers that we're replaying macros from are the same that we're using when we yank, delete or change text, if I set up a uh, a, a simple little macro such as maybe 3DL, so delete uh, three characters to the right. And if I now yank this into a specific place, so I'm going to uh, address register N, so double quote N, and then Y to yank, and then dollar sign to the end of the line, right? So if I were to now paste from register N, we can see that that's stored in my uh, register N. And now I can use the at symbol at followed by N to apply that same uh, text as if I had typed those letters into Vim myself. Right? And so this is a pretty powerful and cool concept. Because our normal mode interactions are just a series of keystrokes, a little language that Vim can interpret, we can take text that encodes those keystrokes uh, as ASCII characters, 
store that text in a register and then apply that text as if we had typed them out, typed it out ourselves. And this is actually one of the really big ideas of why little languages such as Vim's are very powerful. Notice that when we record a macro, when we press the Q key followed by some register name, what comes after it is a sequence of many commands, right? And to so remember a command is the ability to move our cursor around to take out some operation. And so we can actually express complex editing ideas in terms of the language itself record those ideas into a macro location, and then easily replay them uh, such as if we had typed them out ourselves. This ability to compose more complex expressions and commands from a uh, set of simpler commands is what makes Vim's little language extremely powerful.